go arrow. So we're going to save that, go back into our table view source, and I'm going to replace this with get cells. So basically here what we're doing is we're setting the detail text label and we're just formatting the latitude and longitude right here. So now if we run it again and just wait for it. you'll see the changes pop up there. All right, great. So that gives me more information about each of those individual properties. Exactly. So now the next step is we want to, um, uh, we want to see the details and we will figure out how to do that. So we quickly, uh, you know, created a UI table view. We, we uh, showed some data, created a custom, but now we need to uh, navigate using the storyboards. So storyboards has something called segues. And in there, what, we're, what you're going to do is you're going to set the segues on how everything navigates from end to end. So you're going to have a navigation view controller that's going to have the, our table view as our root view. And then it's going to go into a uh, details view. So now we'll just switch back and start doing that. I'm just going to close all these, actually go back to the storyboard. I'm going to zoom out so you can see. And I am going to take a navigation controller and I'm going to drag it out here. So you notice the navigation controller comes out with two, uh, two little screens. One is the navigation controller and then the other one is the controller that's going to be pushed into the navigation controller. So that way it knows which view to show first and then you can navigate from that view to another view which is going to be our details view. All right. So now that that's ready, uh, what you want to do is you want to control click and drag and into our table view and you want to set the relationship as root. So now our table view is root, and I'm going to rearrange these a little bit. And then this one right here, this segue, you want to set it to navigation. This identifies which is the first one, uh, the first view controller that comes in, and we want our navigation view controller to be first. And then from our cell, we want to control click into the details and we want to push into there. And you notice now we have a nice uh, back button. We have a root view controller in the title. We have a title up here. So this is how we set up our, our navigation. And then the details view, we want to set that up. So say for example, we want to label. And again, we just pop that in and make that happen. So I'm going to save that, close that. And I actually have one that's already ready for us. So as you build out that storyboard, it's building, it's taking care of building the navigation menu along the top to move forward through my application, or, or as I move forward through my application, it's taking care of that moving back up th to the navigation menu automatically for me, right? Exactly, exactly. And that's, uh, that's one of the nice things about using the storyboards and, and using the navigations is it'll, it'll handle a lot of it for you. So if you look at here, I copied it over, I reopened the storyboard, and just zoom in. And this is what we want our details view to look like. So we want to show the ID, we want to show the latitude, the longitude, and then in it, we're going to have a web view in there uh, because some of the data that comes back in that KML file is uh, HTML. So we want to show that in a web view so we could see some details of that heritage property. So I'm going to save this, I'm going to close it, and now we're going to go back into storyboard because we need to set a few properties. So 
So down here, let me zoom out, we want to set the identifier. So we want to set this to segue details and then we want to set this uh, the name to uh, LBL ID and we want to set this to LBL lat this to LBL lawn and this to just web view. So this way we can reference them from our code. Now if you notice we have a little red box in here saying that the parent view controller needs code behind. So we haven't actually set our view controller here to have a code behind file. So I'm going to click the view controller here and I'm going to create a name called heritage properties detail view controller. Hit enter. So that's wiring it up to the code behind class that, that's going to fill this particular view? Exactly, exactly. And if you notice here, we now have a heritage properties detail view controller and the designer code is all wired up internally now. So that was the error it was giving us before. So if you set a custom class in for the view controller within here, it'll automatically create the class for you. Great. So now we're going to open up the view controller that we just created and we're going to replace the implementation with one. So we're going to insert some code right here and we're going to have a the selected heritage property, uh, the one that's selected from the list view and then we're on the view did load we want to set all the information uh, on the labels and the web view and everything from the selected heritage property. So now to get that working we need to go into our iOS view controller, our main view controller, and after the view did load, we're going to add this here. And what it did is we added something, added a prepare for segue right here. And this is why we've set up the, uh, if you remember in the storyboard, we set the segue details. Uh, so this is exactly why you need it. So you could um, identify which segue is being clicked and then going, going from there. So here we know that if it's uh, segue details, we set the destination view controller. We grab the view controller as a heritage property, heritage property details view controller. And let me just grab that. And then from there, we set the, we grab the item that is selected. We set the selected heritage property. So when it loads, it actually uh, knows what to set the details to. So then I'm going to start that. All right, so we got the segue. We took the, the detail of the record that they selected. We're passing that then to the view, and then the view's going to, on the load event, or the view did load, it's going to take those details and load it into the view to display those on the detail page, right? Yeah. Okay. So here we go. We have the, the application loaded up. I'm going to select this one, and then it's going to navigate in. I'm going to hit the back button, and then working as expected. So there are the details in the web view. We have the ID, the latitude, the longitude, and now we have a list view. 
showing details, navigating back and forth. And we can now look at a map. So essentially, uh, with a map, it's fairly easy to use MapKit within iOS. So you have uh, your map kits, and there's uh, two ways to set up maps. So you could do a map uh, within your application, or you could go outside to the native map, uh, the native map application. So ideally, you would want to do a native uh, map, or you want to do the embed the map within your application. And then to do a map, it's as simple as uh, MK, uh, newing up a new MK map view and then setting the view of your uh, UI view controller to the map, and then you get a map displayed on your uh, device. So you have different types of maps. You have standard, satellite, hybrid. So it's similar to Bing Maps uh, if you've used that on Windows Phone. And then to add an annotation, and an annotation is pretty much the same thing as a push pin. Um, so you do uh, add annotation, MK point annotation, set the title, and set the coordinate of it to tell it where to place. So now let's switch back over to the demo and actually write out some code to get this going. So the first thing uh, we're going to want to do is we're going to want to copy some files over from the resources. So I'm just going to copy this in. It's going to ask me to overwrite. Uh, so essentially, we're copying these pins and this list so we could uh, switch views. And then we want to make sure they are bundled resource, uh, which they are. So Xamarin automatically sets it to it. And we're going to go back into our storyboard. And we're going to add a button, a bar button item into our navigation bar. So we're going to do the, the set the image. We're going to set the image to pin. And I'm going to get rid of this text. So now we have a button up there. And we're going to name the button BTN map list. I'm going to save that. And we're going to go back to our main view controller. So now that that is ready. So we're going to add some member variables. So for the list, the, the map and the list, if, uh, it's just a Boolean to see if it's, um, if it's visible. We're going to add a using statement here. And then we're going to add in view did load uh, a button map list. Uh, we're going to add a click event. This one does have a click event, not like the other button. It has touch up inside uh, to get a click event. And then we're just going to uh, load the. Uh, we're going to load the map. If if the list view is visible. We're going to swap it. So we're just going to swap in and out of map view and list view. And then in here, we're going to set the map uh, up from here. So I need to copy this. And we're going to set the delegate to a heritage property map view delegate. So we need to copy those files into our project. And we also have a annotation. So these are custom classes that we have in here. A custom annotation, basically, we have this so we can um, put a push pin, but we can associate a heritage property to it. And then heritage property map view delegate. So this one here is where we get the information on uh, when the push pin is clicked we want to tap on that. When it's tapped, we want to get notified. And we have to get the view for the annotation. So this is the code that does it here. Uh, we want to show the pin. Uh, we want to make sure we dequeue it uh, from right here. And if it's not dequeued, we want to just create a new one. And this, again, is for memory optimization. And then we want to set the accessory uh, from here, so a detailed disclosure. And we want to set the pin color to red and to show the callout when it's tapped. When the callout is uh, when it's tapped, 
then we want to set a notification uh, to our action right here. So now we need to set this up in our iOS view controller. So now in here, in the view did load, we have that and Notice we're missing a load map data. So we're gonna just add that in. And this is what's actually gonna load our data inside the map. So I'm just gonna set some using statements here. And then what's gonna do, what it's gonna do, it's going to loop through all the items. And then we have some code in here to actually zoom in on the annotations. Uh, so we're grabbing all the, uh, the top left and bottom right coordinates, uh, latitude and longitude, and then we are setting a region in there. And while we're doing that, we're adding annotations and uh, heritage property annotations so we could view it on the map. So I'm going to run that. All right, so what we just created was a, another view of the data. So we have the list view and we're going to have the map view. And the map's going to put push pins all over the place yes. for me to, to pick those properties. And when I click on one of those,